we've finally found a fuel station. Oh. Now that's an oil company name I wasn't expecting. Really? I know this is childish, but it's just... <laughs> <laughs> I wish we had turd I petrol really in do. Britain. I, I don't is it turd yeah. petrol? <laughs> Why don't they sponsor a Formula One team? Powered by turd. Think of the skid marks. Yeah. Think of the commentary. <laughs> <laughs> At the petrol station, I discovered a problem. You are joking. It's only got a 50-litre fuel tank. A 50 litre? What's the point of a 50 litre fuel tank? You join us at another petrol station. I don't need any, but guess who does? Half an hour later, we were told to brim the tanks in our cars and pay careful attention to the challenge we were about to receive. Hang on a minute. You will now see which of your cars can achieve the highest speed. Well, that'll be mine. It's as simple as that. It's the fastest. How fast your car can go is not relevant. Well, it, it sort it's of is. It's how fast you dare drive it. It's 35 miles. Three and four gallons will do it. That will do. I can't believe how light this door is. You know those, um little tykes cars that all kids have the red ones with the yellow roof door that's what this feels like so watch this right <laughs> still it should pay dividends where it matters here one of the worst things about the old jag was filling it up it used to zzz, 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 all the time this though going in smoothly so far that's a big improvement. It's 7 a.m. And this is a good time to start, partly because the roads are quiet, and partly because this is a good time for filling up with fuel. You see, in a morning when it's cold, and it is very cold this morning, fuel is more dense than it is on a hot afternoon, so you're getting a little bit more for your money. One thing though, don't, whatever you do, forget to take any unnecessary weight out of the boot. There. Just had a quick look at the fuel, uh, fuel gauge and it seems we need some, so... I'm going to give it the best. 98, see if that stops it rattling. I've no backache, the engine's quiet, the ride's good. Good GT car. And I've got one filling station further than I did in the DB9, interestingly. Money has got a bigger tank. If it weren't cloudy, we'd be able to see them screaming by. This was going to be the final filler with a Ferrari averaging 15 miles to the gallon. OK, premium. Premium, OK. Premium. All the way up. And all as quickly as possible. OK. <laughs> I'm it OK. I'm it OK. I have seen X Factor winners less cheerful than all petrol pump attendants are in Japan. Man, I dare do you. Look at this. Hi. <laughs> How frightening is that? He can spot your beaver from about a mile away. While the girl gave my GTR a thousand smile service, I went to buy some more dead fish. HIV, you'll say. HIV what? The engine noise wasn't the only irritation. Is this just going to be a tour of Italy's petrol stations? Well, it depends how far apart they are, doesn't it, really? Look at it this way, think of the snacking opportunities. You come to Italy for food. Yeah, but not crisps. No, not crisps and hideous well, sausages. You don't from know America. what you're going to find, it'll be different in different oh, petrol it, stations. Well, well, are there any Renaissance petrol stations no, we can visit? No, are there any Renaissance sausage rolls in there? Oh, for God's sake. Having filled up his car and himself, have you noticed how his right bicep is now slightly bigger than his left one? <laughs> have you also noticed that when he fills his car up, he stands like a teapot? 
James, I've run out of money. money. <laughs> Have you? <laughs> what an interesting predicament. Please, can I borrow some money? Even though there are these huge cooling ducts here and the engine has no cover at all, that thing has ten radiators. Three to cool the engine itself, three for the intercoolers, one to do the axle oil, one to do the engine oil, and one to cool the hydraulic fluid used to raise that rear spoiler. It's got more radiators than my house. This is going to be a Formula One style pit stop, this is. Where's the fuel filler cap button? I'll have the white Bordeaux. Why don't they put them in the same place? Have you ever seen a more stupid place to put a fuel filler cap release? Come on! That was a fraught filler. It's a place to put it when you're in a race. It's one minute to four French time. They are now, as we speak, arriving in Paris. Just eating the petrol in one big lump. All 20 gallons. Mmm, that was delicious. You're going to need some more of that. Right, I've done the calculations on my phone, and it's doing 19 miles to the gallon. Bearing in mind we're only cruising, you'd have to say, drinks like an Aston should. Lovely. Look who it is. Funny. What? Really funny. It's not funny. This is Oliver. Can I put the posh fuel in? It's Oliver. It's Oliver. What? Oh, come on. James. <clears throat> what? It's Sebastian. Formula One. Is that that German driving bloke? Sebastian. Sebastian. Vettel. Sebastian Vettel. Excuse me. Are you Mr. Vettel? Yes. Sebastian, could you help us out with something? What is it? Well, we're out driving these two cars, and we're trying to decide which is the perfect car to take just for, you know, just for a drive for pleasure. And obviously, we're not going to agree, but could you be like the umpire? To help you decide? Yeah. I hit Denmark and started to feel weary. Apparently, if you drive after you've been awake for 18 hours, your concentration levels are around the same as someone who's hovering around the um, drink drive limit. And if you drive after you've been awake for 24 hours, your concentration levels are about the same as someone who's had half a bottle of scotch. Times like this, desperate measures are called for, so um, what I like to do is reach for my packet of spunk. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, I'm ready. Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> I don't like spunk. Onwards! The trouble with tunnel blasting in a car with atomic power like the Lambo is that the fuel economy does drop a bit. I was doing nine miles to the gallon. Oh dear. Is this your second fill up? Yes. See, mine's got a 110 litre endurance fuel tank. If you two need to get in my slipstream when we're going up the hills, because I know you don't have much power. At no point have I lacked in power to keep up with this thing. At no how point. How many horsepower? 415. 522. It's how it uses them, it's how it deploys them. I'm with They're top, constantly top, top there. Top speed? 175. Top speed? 185 ish. 195. Yeah, You're just well, the same This is probably quite a good car, I'll grant you that, but it's half hearted and limp wristed. It's not a real luxury supercar, and neither is it a proper lightweight. James, a little compromise might be useful in your car. Be honest. No? I love it. In fact, he loved it so much, he bought it a present. What's that? I've bought a cushion. Are you admitting that it's uncomfortable? No, no. Yeah, no, 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 no. Well, hold on. He's admitting his car is uncomfortable. No, it's he been. Well, I think it's as interior design. It's as cat cushion to look pretty. As we reached the outskirts of Bucharest, we stopped for a filler. Let's have some very good petrol. Primesti. Thank you. Did you try your uh, Romanian on him? Or her? Or her? They didn't have any tangy zesty orange drink, but they've got that. Intense well, energy. Burn. What is this? This is not a can of petrol, is it? <laughs> it tastes like it's good for you. No. 
Whoa. You can run an Aston on this stuff. I've just hopped round the back of the garage for a, <clears throat> a wee, uh, and I'm no gardener, but... I think I know what that is. And whilst Jeremy had been investigating the Bob Marley tree... There was another problem with the Mustang. It was extremely thirsty. And soon Hammond needed to stop for fuel. As May and I waited in the coffee shop... ...made loaders famous on the steering field performance... Mm. Hammond filled up. But from where we were sitting, it didn't look like he was doing that at all. Sorry to interrupt, but... I think Hammond really loves that Mustang. <laughs> what is he doing? We even found a way to amuse ourselves during the Mustang's endless fuel stops. <laughs> Until eventually we pulled in for a fuel stop. Okay, now this is a bit of a faff. Hammond? Yes! I may have made a mistake. Where? Well, I added this escape chute so that I can go from my aeroplane fuselage into the back seat of the car. Yes. Which is here. It's very good. But I've covered up the filler flap. <laughs> oh my god, Jeremy, no! No, no, no! no, no. no. What? Seriously, you're gonna hit it. Yeah, that's quite close. Yeah, but unlike your two cars. Ready? <laughs> oh, yes. Yes! Soon, refueling was underway. Here we go. <laughs> go away. <laughs> That's an all new. I've never seen a lockable fuel filler cap where you need to saw. It's very secure. The GT's tiny tank was now nearly empty. This is a splash and dash. Right, petroleum. Oh, please let it not be one of those stupid American ones where I've got to pay first because I don't know how much I want. Sadly, it was. No. Not a debit card. No, I haven't got one. Oh. What? Hello. Can, uh, the it's pumps are... Not approved. Does it have a chip in it? It's probably because of the chip. How do I pay? Uh, I'll, I'll turn the pump on, you pump what you need, and then I'll let you run the card in here when you're done. Thank you so much. So you talk like you, Grant, you can get anywhere. The only blessing was his small fuel tank. I think he stopped for fuel. Has this dig ever stopped for fuel before? How will he pay for it? You got a nectar card. Well, let's find out. I am going to do one lap of the M25 in this thing to see if it's bearable. And to make it more interesting, I shall be going in convoy with a petrol-powered Lupo. And the producer has said, however much money I save in fuel by driving this, I can spend in the shop. Like all motorway service stations, there's much to choose from. 
$4.99 for a Cliff Richard calendar. Tempting. Oh, look at this gold plated crystal telephone. I mean, who's going around the M25 and thinks, I've suddenly decided I need a pair of trousers? Oh, for God's sake. My video's in the discount bin. $3.99. With both cars full to the brim of fuel, it was time to set off. Right, that is now brimmed. And the news is, frankly, astonishing because this little diesel here has done 75 miles to the gallon and the petrol only managed 42 miles to the gallon, and that's a huge gulf. So are the savings. On just one lap of the M25, 119 miles, I've saved £4.29p, which I'm now going to go and spend in the shop. Why do you put that's that the in same way That's mine. your litres. You need to put your miles in. No, 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 no. no. I need to do the in. calculation to get it into gallons, don't I? Which is times divide by 4.45. Yes, put it in the memory. I don't know how you do that. Memory plus. This memory is memory plus. I can't get my glasses on. What divide the gallons by? Oh, God, you do it's not. It's so hopeless. 4.4. No, gallons. Right, memory the plus. divide by Memory plus. I've done right, that. Then clear. 4.45. Clear. Divide it by. James. Wait a minute. Shh. What was your mileage? Is it 4.45. What? What was your mileage? Oh. <laughs> What is my mileage? This is pathetic. <laughs> is what hopeless. is my mileage? <laughs> you were divided right. by 4.45. What's that? Why have you made me... Okay, so it's... Ten. One, two, six. What to divide the mileage by? The, the gallons by 4.45. One, two, six, point four. Yeah. If you've got gallons. That's my mileage. Right, press the divide button. I've got litres. Which is that one. It's like a dash with a dot on it. Yes, 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 yes. And, and then, then press memory recall. Which is which that is your one. Which gallons, yes. And then press equals. Okay. And you should have a figure, I know what, what it is, right? What do you divide by? 4.45. Right. Right, Hammond, since you cheated and hardly drove anywhere <clears throat> today, what miles to the gallon And he, you and he wasn't going day? very fast, no. either, so... It was the fastest car know, here! So you weren't stretching your car, so... It but it was faster it than... It was well within its own capability. But it was faster than everybody you else's just, You were cruising. I, it, what it, is the miles... 9.086. 9, 9.1 miles to the gallon. Yes. James. 8.0. Quite first. Go on. Is it? Go on. <laughs> Six point oh, seven. Yeah. There you go. There you go. Six and three quarter miles to the gallon. Yeah. They, they, they just eat fuel. 6.75. If you'd have driven as far as us today, imagine what you'd have used. I reckon if you rub its back, it'll give a really big burp. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then go to sleep. <laughs> I want to drive it some more. Yes, I like let's go. Let's beauty. go and drive. Six point seven five miles to the gallon. Nine point one mine's economical as well as fast. Bellish. None of us made double figures. It is actually. His is the fastest <clears> and <throat> the most economical now. Can we have some amazement, please? Wow. Wow. Okay, what I'm doing now is a very simple test. I'm filling this four point six litre Range Rover Vogue SE up to the brim with petrol. Hold on a sec. I mean, right. I think you'll agree, this is now full, yes? Now, what I'm going to do is take it for a little drive. Then we're going to come back and fill it up again, and we'll see just how many miles to the gallon this thing is actually doing. All right, all I have to do now is zero the trip. There we go, and we're ready. Let's on road. OK. Now, I've been driving around for a couple of hours in the sort of stop-start city traffic that you get when you're taking the kids to school or going to work, and I've done 41.7 miles. And what I'm going to do now is... Fill it up to the brim again. You've got to brim it so it's all just spurting out. So that's going to be, come on. That's, that's it. 
five liters. And now we have to do the maths. Okay, that's um, 20.85 liters. Now we'll convert that from Euro Babel into English by dividing it by 4.546 equals 4.58 gallons. We'll make a note of that. 4.5864 gallons. Okie doke. Now then. We did 41.7 miles divided by 4.5864 miles to the gallon coming up, everybody. Nine! Nine miles to the gallon! See that little bucket next? Well, he's moved it now, but they put an extra bit in that for themselves. And then it somehow is on your bill. James and Richard don't know that, which is why their bill is probably going to be two and a half thousand pounds to fill their tanks up. Nothing big enough, is there? Hello. Hello, how are you? Fine, how are you? Very well, thank anything you. Anything you wish? Uh, do you have anything enormous? What? Nothing. Oh, it's huge. Oh. Just big. No, just like a. No, it doesn't matter what it is, frankly, but big. Okay. How much is the war gin? The what? Waraji. Waraji. 18,000. It's 18,000? 18,000. I'll give you this for some war gin. This is very, very special. Made from banana? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. It's called war gin. War gin. War gin. Waraji. Uh, it's, it's a fighting drink. I'm going to give some to James, see if we can speed him up. This is the most environmentally friendly thing I've ever seen. Yes. So you dispense petrol by hand. Yes. This is how Greenpeace should run their cars. Uh, which one do you like more? Which? Well, I think I, I prefer electricity. Oh, okay. I bet you prefer, do you prefer electricity? Uh, I don't know this is better. This is better? <laughs> no problem with it. James? Yeah. Would you like a drink of health and joy? I'm running out of fuel. That's, a, that's happened very suddenly. Uh, this is May. How's everyone doing for fuel? I have about a quarter of a tank. I'm going to need more fuel. The mighty North Star has drunk it. Happily, we soon saw signs for a service station. That's excellent. I was just about to start panicking. Oh. Small problem here. It's not open. So, we drove on to the next one. Oh, thank God! Where is it? Where's the fuel? Oh, it's not finished. They could even be fuel tanks waiting to go in. So we drove on to the next one. Please let this one be open. But that didn't have fuel either. How much money are they spending on service stations? Well, a lot, but they're not earning any from them, I can tell you that. The problem China has is it's building motorways so fast that the people building the service stations to supply the motorway with fuel uh, can't keep up. Chaps, my fumes are running out there. After passing two more unfinished service stations, we finally got lucky. Oh, thank God. Ooh, that's a relief. However, our problems weren't quite over. I mean, is that petrol or diesel? What, what's that? That? Well, does green mean petrol or diesel? Oh. <laughs> Ooh. Sorry, she's not shot. 
Oh, well, that's... How do you know which fuel is which? Well, we've no idea. She just comes... This is what she just did with mine. She just put that in and I'm going, is it petrol? She's putting it in, whatever it is. With the lucky dip fill-up complete, we were ready to roll. However, in the RAC-approved Cadillac... Uh, my car won't start. It's the battery. Or have you filled it up with Ribena? As the rest of China was keen to use this one completed service station, I had to push Hammond clear of the pumps. It's not really the message we want to be sending out to the people of China that our cars have broken. I'm doing manual labor. I've found the battery. Okay. Success! Hammond, quite a lot of Chinese people looking. Well, that's the jump leads test done. We've done the jump leads test. If ever we needed them, yeah. those Chinese-made jump leads were excellent. 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 Not that we needed them. Charles oh, left in it. So I brought you some presents. What's coming into it. I've got you steak and cheese biscuit. What? And I brought you. A fan. Really? Yeah. We've That's got fans. fantastic. Mate. How do you feel now? Yeah, well, air cool. There actually. it is. <laughs> See what I've got? Ham and cheese. Yes. yes. Dundee ham and cheese. I'm reading the ingredients. Blah 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 blah. And imitation American cheese. So it's the only thing that hasn't actually got any cheese on it. Yes. After our imitation American lunch, it was my turn to help the stricken Cadillac. Oh, yes! We'd survived the highway, but then we had to pull into a town for fuel. Oh, this is really terrifying. Yeah. Okay! <laughs> Just, um... That's diesel. That's... I've gone... I've been... I'm going to read the president, but that's not going down well. This lady was cross, but not as cross as the garage's owner. Now, are you all gay looking to see how long it takes to get beat up in a hick town? I'm not gay. I'm married. I've got three children. Uh, no, we're not. No. We just sort of decorated our cars in a distinctive manner. NASCAR sucks, country and western is rubbish. Guess what, you're in a hick town, man. We're gonna die now, Don't that's it. She said she was gonna she get off. the boys. <laughs> so we decided to scarp her. I've just remembered, I've actually got loads of petrol. And then, of all the moments, Oi, jump leads. You're joking, jump leads. Not now. This is going to be the quickest jump in history. Yeah. Where are you? You get the leads, I'll start it. Now you're trying to be tears off my parking lot again. The rednecks arrived. We just got a slight problem here. <laughs> this is bad. Then they turned on the film crews. Rocks started pelting our vans. 